so hi everyone today we will be discussing about what are contextual bandits that are used in reinforcement learning for example and codes but before that we need to understand what are multi arm bandits so in my previous video i have already covered this if you haven't watched it do watch it though i will be giving a brief here as well so multi arm bandits are basically a great solution for stateless reinforcement learning environments what is this so basically a stateless reinforcement learning environment is that where we don't have multiple states hence you take a single action you get a reward the episode ends there and there itself so how multi arm bandits are used to solve a stateless reinforcement learning problems so what we do is that we run the simulation for like say n number of episodes this this n can be very big 1000 2000 1 lakh 2 lakhs uh, episodes now for each of the possible action that is possible in this mab uh, in this particular environment we will be getting rewards from the uh, for that during the simulation and we will be averaging out all the rewards that we are getting so for example you ran for 1000 episodes and for action a you got uh, you chose 200 times and you got a certain different rewards now you would be averaging out all these rewards and once the training ends the final value function uh, reward that we got um, can be taken as a value function for action a so multi arm bandits helps us in estimating the value function for the action by just simulating over the uh, environment and averaging out all the results that we get for particular actions this is quite easy i think this is something similar that we would also do even <clears throat> even if you don't understand the concept of mad now a big point that is missing in multi arm bandits is that of context so for example uh, here you can see that irrespective who the agent is Uh, like whether a person is x or the person is y the results of multi arm band remains the same like uh, right so uh, assume that uh, we trained the multi arm band uh, using multi arm band we trained the stateless reinforcement learning environment and eventually it shows that uh, a is the best option followed by b now this particular preference would be given for all the users so whomsoever the user is using the particular environment he would be shown a first and then b now considering a small example from some ecom uh, website there what happens is that the users are coming from different perspectives someone wants to buy a diaper someone wants to buy a shoe someone wants to buy chips etc so they have different contexts so in that case showing them the same action that a would be a preferred action followed by b won't make sense so uh, try to think it in terms of using multi arm bandit for recommendation so there the bandits becomes a products right so uh, your products become the bandits and you're trying to estimate the value function for your products ki if uh, if i show this product first to the user uh, estimated reward that i should be getting now in case of contextual uh, now in case of uh, ecom websites the users are coming with different contexts so multi arm bandit is missing the idea of adding context that is the added information that is coming from the user this can be helpful right So, for example, in case of recommendation system on a e-com uh, website, you can have said one lakh products. Now, eventually, if some context is given to you, you know that ki the user might not be interested in at least fifty fifty percent of these products, right? So, you know that the competition reduces the chances of getting a higher reward becomes easier if you are able to remove those junk recommendations. So, using the information that is coming from the user, that is the added information, a meta information, or the context is very important. how this context is built this is not of uh, our use in this particular blog now though giving you a brief this context can be built out using your history what uh, what are you searching on the internet like that so how to add context to these multi arm bandits so there comes the concept of contextual bandits so contextual bandits do nothing but they add the context and they are again used for stateless reinforcement learning environment only but adding a context so how contextual bandits are different from multi arm bandits so see this particular image here you can see that the first image to be assume that abcd to be four products that we are trying to build a recommendation system over so if you are using a mab you get b as a preferred product followed by a d and c now once you um, train the environment always b would be shown to all the customers followed by a followed by d followed by c now as i told you earlier that uh, the context is missing in case of contextual bandit see the matrix how it would look like so here you can see the shoes medicine chips diapers represent the context from which the user is coming and then the products a b c d so here you can see that uh, when the context is shoes c is the preferred product when medicine is the uh, context 
then again C is the preferred product. When chips is the context, B is the preferred product. And when diapers, then A. So you can see that how adding context can change a lot of things for you. And it can be uh, and it can be the case that you might yield higher rewards when deploying in real world problems. So I think now you have an idea of what are contextual bandits and how contextual bandits are different from multi arm bandits. Now let's jump onto the codes. So this would be the code flow that we would be using. Define states and context and possible action space for the environment. We're defining a reward function. We will be training a neural network which intakes one hot encoded states or context. So they would be nothing but integer values that we're setting up now. So we would be representing all these categories by integers so 0, 1, 2, 3 in this dummy example. Finally, depending upon the policy chosen, a greedy or epsilon greedy, we'll choose an action. So let's get started. So first of all, you would be importing all the required libraries. I would be using TensorFlow majorly for to code out my neural network, but you can use PyTorch as well. Uh, function to convert state into one hot encoding. So this is nothing but it intakes states and then convert and gives a one hot encoding for that particular state. So this is for this function we would be using for converting the samples that we would be generating random samples during the simulation for states and eventually converting these states into one hot encoding. Contextual bandits class. So here you can see that we are first of all um, assigning state, total number of states, total number of actions. Then you're defined, defining over the reward function. So the reward function is quite easy. Generally, there is no reward function. You get the reward directly from the user or some from external uh, environment that is not known. But here for simulation purpose, I have set up a reward function so that we can complete the whole pipeline. Eventually, if you wish to use the same code in real world, you need to remove this reward function and then take consider the actual reward that you're getting. So it can be a click over the product. It can be whether the user bought the product or not, etc. Uh, so here you can see that if the state into action mod 2 is equal to equal to 1 that is odd, then use the first case as the second case. It's very easy. The second, uh, the function network defines the neural network that will help us to estimate the value function for each of the action. So you can see that three dense layers are present and the final dense layer has an activation sigmoid. This is because we are trying to um, limit the value of value function between minus one to one. Also, uh, do note that uh, these are not probabilities else we would have used softmax. We are using a sigmoid because we wish to calculate the actual value function for a given action. This is not trying to generate any probabilities for any uh, particular action. Right. That is how we use a sigmoid that is majorly used with multi label problems. Now coming to the training part. So the training is quite easy. Uh, we have uh, decided over an environment which has 100 states and four possible actions. First of all, we will be deciding over the contextual bandits class. Then we will be declaring on the model that we have built out earlier. Then we will be generating a sample states. So these are random samples that we are trying to generate for training purpose. So uh, it is nothing but we are making a random choice between uh, 0 to 100. That is the portal number of states that we have got. And then you and then over the sample states, I'm generating the one hot encoder, a one hot encoding for the sample state that we have got. Once the sample states are done, then we're trying to calculate a list of list which consists which consists of state and every possible uh, action we feed in and we get the reward for that. So basically, it is trying to calculate uh, the reward for every possible state pair action. Right. So if you are at state zero. What is the uh, what is the reward for action A B C D? If you have state one, what is the reward for action A B C D again? So you can see that uh, we are first of all looping over total number of states, and then we are looping over total number of actions. Hence, calculating the actual reward for all the action pair states. Uh, now, uh, secondly, what we are doing is that we are declaring the actual reward matrix, which is equal to the length of uh, which is of the dimension total number of states cross total number of actions something similar to this total number of states is the number of rows and total number of actions the total number of columns right uh, once this is decided once this is declared as uh, null then using the actual reward uh, list that we have calculated earlier i'm assigning these values to each of the values to each of the uh, row column values that uh, that should be present for the ground truth and eventually we have using the model to fit over these values so what we are doing is uh, we are feeding in the state one hot vectors and then the actual reward matrix becomes our output and we're training the model over that the training is happens and eventually uh, these are the results that we've got uh, so for each of the state uh, i've tried to figure out what is the best possible action using the greedy approach 